Hey guys, Quiff the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. It is Christmas Eve today, it is cold and it is windy. <laughs> uh, but today I'm really excited because I got a nice Christmas present in the mail from IDAS. So IDAS is a Japanese uh, manufacturer of uh, astronomical filters and they have a really special filter for me to test out which is this, the GNB, the uh, Galaxy and Nebula Booster uh, filter ZF format. I'll go into what that format is in a moment. And they also sent me a filter to compare it against, which is like a more traditional light pollution filter, the LPS D3, which is also apparently good against uh, LED light to some extent. So we're gonna try th this, these filters and test them against one another. And why am I really excited about those filters, especially the GNB one? It's because the GNB is made, as its name would in indicate, for galaxies. And galaxies from here in Tokyo, which is a very wide zone, a lot of light pollution, are extremely hard to, to really take pictures of. And I love taking pictures of galaxies, except I'm never able to from here without like spending a lot of imaging time. And I'm hoping that the GNB filter can help me with that. So fingers crossed, and we're going to test that out. So for uh, first, for those of you who are not familiar with IDAS, as I was mentioning, it's a Japanese maker of uh, filters. All of those filters are made in Japan and IDAS has a reputation for really high quality filters that have very good consistency from one filter to the next. Uh, so when you look at the specs on paper and you compare them to similar filters from uh, Optolong for instance, you'll see that IDAS tends to be more expensive but there is a reason for that. And I have, I'm actually a big fan of IDAS in general. I, I love some of their filters. The NBZ filter is awesome for fast systems like the one that I have behind me. This is a hyper star at f2 um, and the and I've checked a lot of their filters via spectrometer and they're basically exactly as per specs it's always beautiful to see and so you're paying more to avoid the equipment lottery that you may have with a lot of other cheaper brands out there uh, they're more expensive though so they're less in reach of a lot of uh, astrophotographers which I completely understand anyway what is so special about this GNB filter? Well, we're first going to look at the LPS D3 uh, wavelengths kind of uh, spectrum, um, and then we'll look at the GNB, so you'll see what is special about it. Okay, and we are now on the chart of the LPS D3 filter, and the black line that you can see is basically the transmission of the, uh, of the filter. Compared to the blue line, the light blue line that you can see, which is the typical emission filter of white LEDs. And this looks very much like a very standard light pollution filter with some, um, some tweaks to work better against LED light. So it starts at 400 nanometers, ends at around 7, 7 and 20, uh, 720 uh, nanometers. So it's like very standard um, on that front, but you can see that it has some dips around where the LED light peaks. So you can see the, the biggest peak of LED light is around here and we have a dip exactly at that spot. spot. And then we have another like peak of LED light around here and there's another dip to try to counter it as well. As, uh, as here. So it's uh, a filter that I actually I wanted to buy quite a, quite a while ago and I never really pulled the trigger, uh, but now I'm really glad to have it in hand to be able to test it out. Okay, so how does it compare to the GNB? Let's look at the GNB filter. This time the white line is the transmission of that filter. And at first glance, you can see that it has two fairly like narrow peaks around uh, uh, wavelengths that are 500, which is for oxygen three effectively, and also uh, 656, which is H alpha. And I believe sulfur two is probably included to some extent in there as well. So at first glance, it looks like a dual band, uh, somewhat narrow band filter. So. Why? What, what is special about it? It's the part on the right. Look at the part on the right. It goes deep inside the infra infrared to like up to 900 and more, 920 nanometers. So we have a whole uh, area where the filter passes light and I assume <laughs> that this is good for galaxies. I'm actually not an expert at all on that, but I'm really looking to see forward to see 
how well it is going to work. Now, because it's using wavelengths that are so much in the deep red into the infrared, we need cameras that are sensitive to that. And the camera that I have here uh, is probably not that sensitive in those wavelengths. So what IDAS did is they actually also sent me this SV Boney uh, 705C color camera with the uh, IMX464 sensor that is very sensitive in those areas in, in infrared there. And so I am going to play around with this camera. So this camera doesn't have active cooling and it's the first time that, that I try it and it's the first time I try an SV Bunny camera uh, at all. So I hope it's going to work and Nina and my capture software and all this stuff. We're going to see how well that works. And I am going to install the first filter, so the LPS D3 filter in the camera. And it uses the ZF mount, which is something that I had never heard of before, but it's very smart because when you use like small sensors, ZW cameras or apparently ZV Boney as well, very often the naked camera is provided with uh, a T-ring here. So you have the naked camera with the sensor and the T-ring. And the filter works by nesting itself within the T-ring here. So if you look at the filter itself, it has actually some small feet there to, uh, to kind of like um, have a, a, an equivalent or very balanced height across the area where it's put in. And you can just like put it inside the, uh, the T-ring itself. So I can nicely drop it in and there it is in the uh, in the camera right there so that seems to be uh, to be working well and then you can uh, really uh, lock it in place by uh, just like additional spacers or your uh, any other equipment that you have connected to your camera and here we are the filter is inside it's not using any really optical path or optical distance which is really nice when you have like limited back focus uh, so i really i kind of i really like this uh, this system so anyway i am going to replace the camera here with uh with this uh, camera with the lps d3 filter i am going this evening to take uh, an image of m33 i'm going to take one hour before the zenith with the lps uh, d3 and then one hour after the Zenus with the uh, GNB and tonight the conditions are supposed to be very clear albeit windy but that means that by taking one hour before Zenith and one hour after Zenith I should be able to have like equivalent data to really compare like how well does the GNB filter do against a more standard uh, light pollution filter even though like it has specific tweaks against uh, white LED lights so let me install the camera and take those images and I'll see See you later with the uh, actual processing on M33. And we're back inside and I have done the uh, capturing uh, and in the end I took uh, 40 minutes, roughly 40 minutes um, from the uh, LPS D3 filter, so the more general light pollution filter, and then I took 40 minutes from the Galaxy filter, the GNB filter. And uh, I did so because the uh, uh, M33 reaching the zenith happened much earlier than I expected, so I kind of gave the advantage to the LPS D3 by letting, go, letting it go past the zenith, past the meridian flip until I saw a downward trend in terms of the number of stars that were detected in each image by Nina. And, uh, and then I did the uh, GNB and I'm actually still doing the GNB. I'm just taking like the first 40 frames after I started capturing the GNB. And by the way, you can see on Nina that there's a, a huge jump in the um, both the HFR and the number of stars that are detected, which is very interesting and, and very normal, very expected. So this part here is wherein I was capturing with the LPSD3, the general light pollution filter. And this part there at the top was when I was uh, capturing with the uh, galaxy filter, which we saw has a lot of band pass in the infrared. And so because it has a lot of band pass in the infrared, we're getting more stars uh, which is exactly as expected and we're also getting bigger stars because they tend to bloom more on the camera sensor so it all makes sense also it's very interesting but uh, this does not is not included in the data that actually uh, stacked but it started actually um, getting higher here at this stage and this is because in Tokyo very often at around 9 p.m. or shortly before 9 p.m. 
uh, a lot of shops turn off the lights and the big LED banners and all that kind of stuff. And so we suddenly get a better, <laughs> less light pollution. And so I also want, and, and what it's one of the reasons why I limited the amount of time that I was going to spend on each filter to avoid that little cutoff so that uh, the, uh, uh, this area at the top is what I what I used for the LPSD3, the general light pollution filter, and this area here is what I used for the uh, Galaxy Nebula filter. That way, we get really a very um, deterministic, or, or like as much as I can compare filters. And in theory, the Galaxy and Nebula filter is disadvantaged because M33 was lower, slightly lower uh, than for the LPSD3. Okay, with that said, let's open the final images in PixInsight. Uh, so as you can see, those are the fi final images. I asked my wife to rename the images so I wouldn't know which is which. Um, and we'll see uh, how they look like. They're the autocrop, by the way, from PixInsight. The latest uh, weighted batch, weighted batch pre-processing has this autocrop feature. That's pretty nice. And oh, I already know which filter is which. Oh no, that's super obvious. Uh, okay, I'm gonna give you 10 seconds. No, just pause the video and, and think about which filter is which. <laughs> we know that the uh, Nebula and, uh, and Galaxy Booster filter is basically a dual narrowband filter with fairly wide band passes plus infrared. Uh, and that the general light pollution filter is just like a general light pollution filter. So yeah, this one has more light pollution. So this is the LPSD3 and this is the uh, the Galaxy and Nebula filter. I'm gonna double check in the fits header, yeah. So this one, GNB, and uh, this one, let's see. Yeah, LPS, okay. So that's exactly as I was expecting. Let's run um, a screen transfer function unlinked on either, so at least uh, M33 is visible. There's quite a bit of gradients. And let's see here. Oh, it's not even close. I did take flat frames very quickly uh, when I changed the filters for, for both the LPS and the, um, and the GNB. Wow, this is so cool. This is so cool. This is uh, actually, to be precise, this is 34 minutes of data, 34 minutes of data each, if I'm being very precise. Let, let's run some automated uh, background extraction on each. Okay, so this is with automated background extraction and come on, it's not even close. Oh my word, oh, this is so cool. Oh, this is so cool. Oh my word, this is so cool. Oh, this is awesome. So this camera is not cooled. Although we can see one of the problems of the image on the right is uh, the, the star colors seem to be less obvious, probably less correct than on the left. I'm not sure actually, but the stars are definitely bigger. So you will need to control the stars more, but we have blur exterminator to control that. Oh, this is super cool. Uh, let me try. I'm just going to do something very quickly. I'm going to do a quick processing on both images, maximum five minutes each, to see what kind of result I can attain with each image. Same length, the image on the, le the left in theory had the advantage because M33 was higher in the sky compared to the image on the right. But oh wow, oh, this is amazing. Uh, yeah, uh, let, me, let, let me process that and get back to you. <laughs> Okay, I did some very quick processing and it is very interesting. So I followed basically the same steps on the two images, except uh, that the image on the left with the more general light pollution filter required dynamic background extraction to be, uh, to be applied to really remove the gradients, which I didn't have to do with the image on the right. Now it is very interesting. The image on the, on the right has obviously more contrast, more nebulosity, more details overall than the, uh, than the image on the right. Uh, but the I then the image on the left, sorry, but the image on the left has better colors as far as I can tell. Uh, it might need some SCNR, which I also applied to the image on the on the right. There we go. But overall, 
the image on the left simply has better colors, which means, what should I do? I should take the luminance from the image on the right, which is with our galaxy filter, which in and of itself is really good, but it has less color than this one, even with some saturation, and then apply it as a luminance to the color. So let's do that. So I'm extracting the luminance from my galaxy filter, and I am going to do an LRGB combination with RGMB uh, unselected, uh, yes, with this as the luminance, and see whether by combining the two images together we can get the best of both worlds. Let's see. <laughs> this is the result. Oh my word! The image on the left is now the combination of our light pollution filter and our galaxy filter together. The light pollution filter provided the color mostly and actually completely and the uh, galaxy filter provided all of the details. So this is the result. Combining those two filters. This is a total of um, 68 minutes of data. So just a bit over one hour from Tokyo <laughs> on M33. Yep, this is amazing. Oh my word, this, this filter combined with the right camera, the right sensor that has a proper sensitivity in the infrared is a game changer. This is amazing. Now I wish I could have like, okay, I, does, I, have, I have this idea, I have this crazy idea. Could you make the LPS D3 filter with the infrared section? <laughs> of the uh, uh, of the GNV filter, kind of like combine both filters together. Because from what I can tell, because I, I have more trouble extracting colors from the GNV filter, but it, the GNV filter has so much better contrast and details and nebulosity, by making a filter that combines the best of both worlds, it might be a fun thing. Then I could, I, I could get this without having to combine data from the two filters together. Think about it. <laughs> oh my word, this is awesome. And we're heading into galaxy season very soon, right? So this is just in time. Curse you, Idas, because now I need to find a cooled color camera that has a sensor that is very sensitive in the infrared. I have to try using those filters. This is I have to keep using those filters. This is this is so cool. This is so cool. So yeah, there you there you have it. The uh, new GNB filter from Adidas. If you combine it with uh, the color data from um, a normal light pollution filter, whether it is the so whether it is the uh, Adidas LPS D3 or something else, it could be just like even a UVI R cut filter or, or something like. Uh, 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 an Optolong L Pro or whatever you want to use as uh, an, a general light pollution filter, you can then take the GNB filter from IDAS combined with a camera that has good infrared sensitivity and combine both data into one image to get something like this in just 60 minutes from Tokyo. Yep, yep, that's nice. I'm, I'm taking those odds. <laughs> you can tell I'm impressed. This this is really neat. This is really neat, neat. And yeah, with that, that's all. Oh my hair! That's all I wanted to talk about today. Uh, Idas, thank you so much for sending across the camera and the, the filters for me to test, and curse you for tempting me into buying new equipment. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Anyway, that's it for this video. If you found it interesting, feel free to go down below, click that subscribe button, bell icon, like, leave a comment as well, telling me what are your impressions of this and any suggestions you may have. And as always, don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.